Ah, all right. So, um, so in the previous lesson, we added co uninitialize and co create instance. Very nice. Now let, let's run through this code. So F11, F11, F11. I could use F10 to skip over, not go into throw if error, but F10 stops the recording of, of this device, of this applica recording application that I'm using. So uh, I need to click, right, F10, I need to click over here in order to skip it. Very nice. And F11, let's see, HR returned as OK. And, um, you know, just, just before we invoke it, let's stop and run through this again. Let's tell it to run right through here. Or, you know what, F11, ignore, no breakpoint. And step over, 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 and just be just before we invoke co create instance. Let's see. So this value, there is a value here. This is the value. Just a bunch of numbers. Very nice. So this is the the identifier of the filter graph class. The class identifier of the filter graph. And uh, the server value, by the way, if you want to see it, F12 is just one. Very nice. The IID, the interface ID of the graph builder interface, is also a GUID, globally unique ID, which is similar, but it's a different value than the filter graph. And the P graph right now, if I hover over it, I see nothing. Oh, it's a bunch of C's. Okay. It's not such a good idea to have local variables uninitialized because in case co create instance fails, well, in case co create instance fails, I guess we'll be throwing an exception. So the code will discontinue. By the way, if we throw an exception, we will not be invoking co uninitialized. We didn't notice this, right? Which is not good because, again, if this function would be within a bigger application and we would be invoking it again and again, and each time we would be invoking it, it might fail, it might throw an exception. We would catch the exception, but we would skip over the co uninitialize, which is not good, right? If you go back to the MSDN, we go to co initialize, I think they also have here co uninitialize. I think if you scroll to the back or to the end or co uh, control F, co uninitialize, there it is, and go to co uninitialize. Closes the com library on the current thread, you know, yeah, unloads all DLLs loaded by the thread, frees any other resources that the thread maintains, and forces all remote procedure call connections on the thread to close. Let me see if they say, if they say that, what they say about how critical it is to invoke co-uninitialize. So this is co-initialize. Let me see. Um, co uninitialize. To close the com library gracefully, each successful call to co initialize or co initialize extended, including those that return as false, must be balanced by a corresponding call to co uninitialize. However, the first thread in the application calls co-initialize with zero or apartment threaded must be the last thread to call co-uninitialize. Otherwise, subsequent call, uh, never, never mind, but even co-initialize must be balanced, even in case it fails. So we always need to invoke this. Basically, what we need is a try finally block 
Now there is no try finally block built into C++, right? There, right? Only Java inv invented the finally construct, as far as I know. Uh, we could use the underscore underscore try construct that m that is Microsoft specific, and that does have a finally construct, a finally clause, but that's not a normal finally close. It's a strange sort of finally, cl strange sort of finally. So instead of this, let's use a catch all. open block and close the block here and shift everything over here to the right and since we want to return the HR so let's remove the HR from here and move it over to here all right so basically so what do we have so co so we'll be invoking let's start over and see how this feels f11 f11 11 11 this should work fine i can't use f10 so skip over and f11 and the sok is okay so i guess for now right oh oh but catch is only in case of an exception and we want to catch we want to invoke it in any case all right but we we don't want to call co uninitialize only in case we have an exception but rather in any case so basically what we would like to do is i would say do nothing in the catch and instead call call uninitialize after that so in so let's let's think about what could happen what are the possible scenarios so we might be so we will always write if we're invoked so we'll call co initialize and at the end we'll always call co uninitialize if we throw an exception here in order to prevent the rest of the code from running then we would jump straight basically to here and co uninitialize. All right, now what about this function? In case this function, uh, if it fails, well, you could say, well, if this function fa <laughs> fails and we throw the exception, all right, so again, we'll be invoking co uninitialize. However, what about this value? This value is a pointer to an allocation. So we need to release it, as we will see, back to the MSDN, back to the tutorial. So at the end, we have this block, this cleanup. So you can see that they invoke pgraph release. So since we are com based, we have to invoke release. We'll discuss this later. So I, I don't know, I mean, it might be, well, if I don't know, we should test, but you could say that if HR succeeded, then P graph is, well, it should be deallocated, right, it should be released. In case we have a faulty HR, which means the allocation failed, then this, this pointer should be null. Well, Okay, so we should always be releasing it in case it was allocated. However, how can I know whether it was allocated or not? I mean, what can I ask before I can access the pointer, right? In case, control space, doesn't complete, p graph, p graph, pointer, Shift F5 to stop the run. Control space. No intelligence available. I guess because the if. Anyway, what I'd like to know, well, I, I would like to invoke the release method that we will discuss. 
in order to deallocate the allocation, in order to undo the create the co-create instance. However, this 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 might be garbage. In case co-create instance fails, the p graph pointer would be garbage. The allocation would fail. Co-create instance would not set the pointer to anything. Again, we will discuss this again and again, this notion of allocation and release. Let's jump for a second to the definition of the co-create instance function to see what they say about it. So right button click and open in a new tab. So co-create instance function creates a single uninitialized object of the class associated with the specified CLS ID. Call co-create instance when you want to create only one object on the local system. To create a single object on a remote system, really not interesting. Let's see about PPV. PPV is our output. So address of a pointer variable that receives the interface pointer requested in the RIID, the reference to the interface ID. Okay. Upon successful return, the content of PPV or P the content of PPV contains the requested interface pointer, right? Because it's a pointer to a pointer. Upon failure, the content of PPV contains null. Very interesting. So they set it to null in case it fails. All right. Another, okay. So I guess we can see if it's, if it's null or not. So P graph, control space, still no completion. The intelligence is not, the autocomplete is not helping for some reason. I don't know why. So if P graph is not null, in C++ you can just say if P graph or can't you F6. P graph is the pointer to a pointer. Mm, so the content of P graph, F6, F8. P graph undeclared P graph is undeclared right because it's outside of the block right so we need to define the P th this pointer over here there's nothing um, we have to do this instead of over here like this. So P graph is a pointer. So F6 succeeds. So if P graph is not null, then P graph release. However, what if Co-initialize failed. HR is less than zero. We throw an exception over here. We never initialize P graph. So it's garbage. So we'll be invoking the release of garbage. Hopefully we'll get an exception and some sort of access violation. At worst, we'll cause our application to become unbalanced. So we really have to initialize our pointer. Very good. Okay, let's compile F6. Build succeeded. Okay, I'm going to stop here. We'll run it in the next lesson. Thank you very much.